All right, welcome back to video number two. I am in fact Ben the Best Five, and you're watching my career playthrough. Absolutely no mods, and the best possible and most efficient way to complete a mission within the contract parameters. So for this episode, I've in fact selected, pre-selected a mission, and it's to send a satellite into a bit of a weird orbit. So it has a six hour orbital period because it's in a geostationary orbit. However, it's inclined and has a periapsis and an apoapsis which aren't the same, which means it's in fact not going to remain geostationary or geostationary. Two words are the same, it's just, yeah. Kerbal Space Program likes to add the word K to everything. So geostationary is actually just geostationary or geosynchronous in this situation. Anyway. However, this mission, the end class which you saw previously demonstrated, can't complete this mission for two reasons. Reason number one is uh, the orbit that it's in is too high and requires too much fiddling around for a rocket such as the end class to actually complete. And the second the thing is it has a gravity or gravity detector which is required to be on the satellite and the end class because of the size of it couldn't actually fit one to the side well it could but it would have difficulties getting off uh, getting through the launching phase just because it would probably burn off i have done it before but it would most of the times scientific stuff that's attached to the side of it burns off and the end class is pretty much at its limit of its capacity just by putting the satellite it does put in there into orbit, so yeah, we're going to need a bigger rocket which can have a fairing and can kick it up into orbit. So here it is, the rocket that which we'll be using, the M-Class, short for Microclass. As you can see here, it is in fact powered by five, sorry not five, as you can see here it's powered by nine vernier engines, has a second stage which just has a terrier engine, and up here it has a a little probe with the relay satellite can be a bit useful sometimes to, to be able to relay instead of just staying through. Also, some solar panels to keep it powered and a fairly basic probe core. However, the complexity of the probe core is particularly necessary because it's got one in the second stage, which really does all the work. Um, now, I'm just going to go ahead here and add the gravioli detector so it can perform the mission. Successfully, and here is the M class rocket in its complete stage, or well, in its complete form for this particular mission. So, here we are with the M class rocket. It's designed to take a payload up into orbit, but that first stage, which will go on a suborbital trajectory, but then get recovered, and then that upper stage will put it into an orbital insertion and then maneuver it so it's in the correct orbit for. A mission completion. And here we go. Now because the orbit we want to go for is actually at an inclination, we're going to gravity turn in two directions at once so that we're going down at about a 45 degree angle so that we are in line with the um, destination orbit. Well as close to as in line as possible. Now, yeah, we want to get to about 10 degrees before, sorry, 45 degrees at 10 kilometers about, it's pretty good. Then from there we actually just want to follow the prograde marker, because that way we've got the least amount of resistance. Now we want to go over here to our display, which will tell us our apoapsis, so we can just make sure that our apoapsis is going to be nice and high and above the atmosphere line of Kerbin so that we can f perform that lower stage recovery and get as much money back from that as we can so that our mission is nice and successful. 
also the recovery is successful so that we can get as much profit from it as possible. There we go, we're up above the Kerbal Kalman line and we run out of fuel in that lower stage which means we can in fact go ahead and stage and then switch vehicles because it will automatically do it because there's a probe core on both of them and we'll just set this to target prograde because it's a great idea less air resistance, less drag now so as you can see we're almost you know in, at the same inclination as the target orbit but that's okay we will have enough delta v to fix it up later now i'm just going to perform a circularization burn at apoapsis uh, so and now we can once we're out of the atmosphere Oh, we can just set to target the maneuver now. But yes. So I'm going to throttle down quickly and then activate that engine and then deploy that fairing. And then I'm going to start my burn, except the burn indicator is a bit funny like that. As soon as you leave the atmosphere, its numbers change drastically. See? Um, However, now I'm out of the atmosphere, I can deploy those solar panels and start generating some power. Just to make sure this upper stage doesn't run out of power, because that would be embarrassing and catastrophic. To say the least. However, those solar panels are going to make sure that that doesn't happen. You can just use this indicator here to check out apoapsis and periapsis. So when the two of them are roughly the same, we can stop burning because that means we are in a nice circular orbit that we can use to achieve our target orbit. See? We are in a confirmed circular orbit. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Now we can come out to the map screen and switch to that booster and help it make its way back down to splash down nicely in the ocean help us you know recover stuff now with the m class it wasn't as important that we got it facing retrograde however with the m class it is because that decoupler those parachutes and those batteries if it's not facing retrograde and doesn't enter in a very strictly retrograde direction then they will burn off really quickly and it will flip and all sorts of nasty stuff happens so we want to be facing retrograde so that as much of as much as possible we save the upper elements from burning now we're just starting to get a bit of re-entry heating showing up but it's fine because the engines down the bottom can handle the heat and it's the elements up the top are being protected nicely from the heat because you know, they're not right down where all the action's going on. Although it is starting to slip away from that retrograde marker. However, that should be fine. Because even at this stage, if it does flip, like it looks like it might, the elements which are most likely to burn still won't be exposed to enough heating that they blow off. Alright, we've gone through the worst of the heating phase now, and now we just need to wait for it to slow down, slow enough, that we can deploy those parachutes and land it and recover it. As you can see, we are deploying the parachutes, it helps slow it all the way down to a nice ocean touchdown where we can recover it for maximum profit. Even though the Kerbal Space Center is, you know, out of sight, so yeah. We can in fact time warp it back down to the ground, to the ocean, you know. 
pick it up from there. Because it takes a long time to get down there, but, you know. I guess this is kind of similar to the recovery system that Electron rockets have planned for them. However, I came up with this idea first. Like, I've had this rocket design ever since the uh, Making History DLC came out. So, you know, Rocket Labs, if you want to start paying me royalties, then, you know, that'd be great. I'm also joking. The designs are actually quite not similar. Even though they do have a parachute to drop them down, and they do have nine engines on the first stage. There are various differences, like the Electron has an upper kick stage, etc, etc, etc. There we go, touching nicely down, and we can go ahead and recover that. So here we are, we've got no science, but that doesn't matter, because this mission was in fact about profit. However, we have in fact been able to recover 10,000 funds from this mission, which has reduced the cost by half which drastically increases our profit, which means that this mission is only going to cost us about 10000 out of pocket. However, it, they're paying us a lot more than $10,000 to complete this mission. Like we are making like a few hundred times profit here. Anyway, we can in fact select our main rocket because the mission's not over yet, just the recovery. And we are in fact going to do this in a series of three burns. Burn number one, we are going to get, we are going to raise our apolapsis to the height of the rocket, the best of the, um, orbit the best that we can. Burn number two is we are going to change our inclination, because our inclination is off by about 12 degrees. And then burn number three is going to be our periapsis raise so that we are in the final destination orbit. And the reason that we are doing our inclination change at um, when we're up at, when, when we've already completed our burn to get ourselves up to orbit is because those uh, inclination burns are more efficient the further away from periapsis you are whereas all of the burns are in fact less efficient the further away you are. So those two apoapsises, apoapses I guess, are pretty close, so we can go ahead and target that, and warp to the burn. Dark side, nice. Resources, yep, just checking to make sure we've got enough stuff, enough electrical charge, because that can be a problem sometimes, but it shouldn't be because we have nice big battery reserves, but, yeah. You never know, sometimes you get let down by your own designs, but hopefully not this time. We are performing our burn to, in fact, raise our apoapsis to the desired height. There you go, that's nice and close. And now we want to set our set and manoeuvre node to below the point of one of the nodes, the node that's furthest out. And we are in fact going to perform a burn in the correct direction this time to bring those to yeah, to make it so that there is so that those two orbits are at the correct inclination because that's a very important part of the mission and once that burn is correct well inclination sorry is correct after the burn in fact a good way you can check is to make sure that your two apoapsises 
FOFCs are in line. While we are burning, however, we can in fact watch our nodes because they will start to change as we change display on the screen. The display will change on the screen as our nodes change. So we can watch that and wait till they get to zero or swap around or start swapping around because that will indicate that's another indicator that our um, orbital inclination is correct. One degree, one degree, but one degree is probably actually 0 0.000 whatever because it's not very precise. That's probably going to be close enough for our contract. Now we can burn out like that. Well, create a burn there to in fact raise our periapsis to where it's desired. Um, and we'll just warp forward to that. And depending on how um, close that is, we might need another a quick apoapsis raising burn as well. Uh, maybe, I'd, I'd guess yes, because we are off by quite a bit, but then... I know this game can be quite generous sometimes, so who knows. By the way, down on that indicator, I have set to 50%, which means I get 50% of the burn done before um, I reach the marker, because that's generally where you want it to be. However, if the burn is longer, uh, then you do actually want to set it so that you perform a higher amount of the burn before you get to the node. I generally set it so that for about every minute of burn that I do, I increase it by about 10%, and that's generally what gets me the most accurate burn. However, for nice small burns like this, just saying it at 50% will give you a nice and accurate burn, very close to your maneuver node. Okay, so apparently the apoapsis was good enough, and yeah, we are now in fact in the desired orbit, and as you can see here, we have in fact completed the contract using the new class of, well, old class but new to the channel, class of booster, which I now show you guys. And I can in fact go ahead and deorbit this now because we don't like leaving junk in space sometimes. So we can in fact just perform a little um, burn like that to make sure that we are away from the probe so we don't hit it and knock it out of orbit or destroy it, and we can now use the remaining fuel because this has quite a bit of fuel left over, because it can go to further destinations and perform similar missions around places like Juna, can put satellites in Juna orbit, um, similar sized satellites in Juna orbit, uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and deorbit this now. And now that's on a collision course to the planet, we can in fact, whoop, there we go. The satellite is in fact in its final complete correct orbit. The contract has been completed at maximum efficiency because of that boosted recovery, as well as using a cheap rocket to start with. And yeah, thanks for watching. I'd like to thank the 23 people who viewed my last video. That's 22 more people than I suspected, as well as all the people who have subscribed and commented on my content. Thank you, it's more than I was expecting. Thank you. Um, by the way, if you do want to support me, then thank you for viewing. It's always a pleasure. Views are always appreciated. Um, please like, subscribe, comment, whatever, if you feel inclined to, because I would really appreciate this. And thank you for watching.